Want to catch the game or relax to your favorite music? Sluggers has you covered with TVs on every wall and a Touch Tones jukebox. Watch, relax at Sluggers Bar and Grill. Welcome to Endzone Online. I'm George Ayub with the Thousand Yard Guy, Bobby Mills. We are in the throes of high school playoff football. It's really exciting time. Uh, we're down to semis in some classes, quarters in other classes, and so they pick up uh, again this week on Tuesday. Right. And so let's get right to it. Aurora survives. They go to Beatrice right. and get the big win. What do you think of that? I, I thought Beatrice really had the had uh, everybody's number this year. I, I, uh, I don't want to say I'm a great soothsayer, but I, I figured Aurora would, would win that game. You I, heard it first, after the fact. After the fact, Bobby of course. Mills. It's <laughs> awful easy, George, to do that. I thought, I thought Beatrice had played a lot of close games, and I thought teams could score on them. And uh, Aurora's awful tough in the playoffs. You know, Hubert's a very smart guy, and they always seem to come through, and now they're one step away from Lincoln. Right, and they have a home game. Right. They're going to match up with Norris, right. who a 28-7 winner over Gretna, the two seed in that class. That surprised me a little yeah. bit. I, I didn't see that one coming. So, and uh, I followed that game a little bit on Twitter, and uh, Norris really didn't, it didn't seem like they had a lot of trouble. Wow. Scored early Gretna's and, defense is very yeah, good. Scored early and scored often. On the other side of that bracket, Gross Catholic and Elkhorn, Elkhorn, a winner over, 10-7 winner over York, who had come here, upset the Northwest Vikings, went out and upset Scott's Bluff, kind of the Cinderella team in Class B. York should have won that game, George. And, and they probably could have won that game. Yes, they did. They had a drop touchdown pass, which they ran the identical play the next possession and scored. But the one that they dropped, would have, well, it would have been 14-10. to 10. Right. So, I mean, they had a good football team. But did you know that Alcorn beat Gross earlier this year 32-17? to 17? Really? Yes. Now that that really throws a wrench into the prediction right. thing. Right. Wow. It really does. So that's a wide open class. It in, is in Class B, and so the Huskies might have a shot. We're going to move to Class C one, which I think is probably the Western Division is the most competitive of all the classes. It is. It includes uh, Boone Central from our coverage area and Adam Central. Boone Central is going to play Gothenburg, a 14 seed, mm -hmm. who's find that finds themselves now in the quarterfinals. Right. Uh, against uh, Boone Central, Newman Grove, undefeated. And defeated. And um, Gothenburg and always plays well in the playoffs. George. Actually, Newman Grove. I'm sorry. They they lost that first game. Right? They and they that, lost. Yeah, they yeah. lost. A, a, yeah, they did against uh, Norfolk Catholic. Right. Right. Yeah. So on the other side of the bracket, Carney Catholic, Adam Central. That'll be a barn burner. The I, the, the wild card there is Jake Fowler going to tote the ball for the Patriots. I think it means a whole lot. I like I mentioned, Buzz Niederklein is a great. Backup, 790 yards isn't bad in the backup. Boy, they really need Jake. Connie Catholic is so active on defense. That four linebacker set, Alex Lowe, I think might be the best linebacker in the state. And uh, they just have it going on defense. And they can score, too. And they just, they just run so much uh, uh, misdirection in that backfield. But you know how good Adam Central's defense is. But they, they may need to score more than two touchdowns in that game to win it. So Fowler's going to be important. Because they're close, any advantage to the home field? I mean, we, we talk about that sometimes early in the playoffs when the distances can be great. But do you see any advantage for Adam Central being at home? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. That the, Connie Catholic at home is a different story. That's a real confined mm -hmm. area. Adam Central's a little more open. They play well everywhere. But I don't think it means a lot this, you know, this Tuesday. Okay. I really don't. All right. On the other side of that bracket, Pierce and Wahoo, that should be a barn burner. Oh, Lord. That well, should be great. As well. Okay. So in C2, Donovan Trumbull keeps rolling on. Took out Crofton last week. Who, who predicted that? I, I did I would not. say I did, but it'd be a lie. Wow. I think we both were saying that Crofton was just going to... Shut, shut Slough down to 20 yards or whatever. And here he gets 107. 49 points they score. I, and... and Wilt Fallen, the quarterback, was 20 of 22 passing, broke the school record. So what do you watch for? The, the running, the passing game opens up the run game. Now you told me earlier before we went on the air here that the Crofton coach says Donovan Trumbull is incredibly athletic. Boy, he did. He, that's all he had. Of course, a losing coach is going to say that, but Tony Hoffman is a, is a truthful guy up there and not a sore loser. And when he says something like that, it really makes you stand up and take notice. So uh, Donovan Trumbull, 
And North Platte St. Pat's will go anywhere and play anybody. They're yeah. not afraid of anybody. Yeah. That game should be yeah. unreal. St. Pat's and, and, and Donovan Trumbull look to be a good one. Oh. Undefeated Sutton Mustangs are going to take on Hershey, another perennial playoff team, yep. at Hershey's house. And that, uh, that's a 5 o'clock game uh, on Tuesday on, uh, of this week. What do you think about this? Uh, can the Suttons continue that winning streak? I think Sutton can. They've got so many weapons in the backfield and their defense. They lost all their backs from a year ago, but all their linemen returned. And boy, that makes a difference because even Ayub and Mills could run through, oh, run be <coughs> pardon me, run, uh, run, run behind that line. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think we could. Maybe at one time in our lives, maybe we could. Yes. So. so that'll be good. On the other side of that bracket, uh, Aquinas, of course, the favorite probably in C2. You know, they're, they're has been another winning streak this year and uh, they haven't had they haven't, they haven't really been tested no 54 to nothing 55 to six that's but yeah. Bergen gave them a good game last time 19 to seven and yeah. I think that I think uh, Bergen will give them a good game this time so Aquinas and Bergen they'll play that game in Fremont is it in Fremont yeah. I, I oh no I'm sorry it's in I no. think they play it in David yeah. City that, David at City. that yeah and then David City Aquinas is tough down there so so that should be good and I and I also uh, that game is in Sutton as well. Right. And in Donovan Trumbull. So let's move on here. Uh, in D1, Giltner, again, whew, they are peaking at the right time. They didn't put 90 up, but almost half of it. I know. 42 to 6, they have a home game against Medicine Valley, who threw up 64 points against Garden County. Can anybody stop, can anybody stop Giltner? I don't think so. Medicine Valley does a lot of throwing, and they'll show a lot of different sets to Giltner, but nobody's been able to solve Giltner's offense yet. That is so hard to diagnose, and uh, I think they'll go all the way. But Medicine Valley, you know, they, they don't play as tough a schedule as maybe the Eastern teams do, so I'm not sure. And Selma Murta had a nice football team up there, and Giltner still laid 40 on them. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I look for Giltner to get passed. Should Again. be a good one. Yep. Should be a good one. It could we'll be. be right back with more talk on high school playoffs. This is In Zone Online. We'll be right back. Hungry at lunch, after work, or the big game? Sluggers features charburgers, brats, and chicken from the grill, corn nuggets, poppers, fries, and onion rings from the fryer. And don't forget about the daily specials. Eat and enjoy at Sluggers Bar and Grill. All right, we are back on End Zone Online. George Ayub with Bobby Mills. We're talking high school football playoffs. We are just talked about Giltner in uh, D1. Shelton is still alive in D1. They are. And they uh, 42 to 17 over Spalding. And they're going to match up this week with Bertrand. They're going to have to travel to Bertrand. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. I, well, Bertrand, I, I guess it wasn't a complete surprise that they beat Kennesaw, but 80 points, 80 some points. Uh, they really have a great football team, and um, I, you know, it's going to be a tough. It'll be tough for Shelton. I mean, if you put score comparisons, they lose to Shelton. I mean, they lose to Kennesaw. Bertrand beats Kennesaw. Right, yeah. But I think that's going to be that's going to go down to the wire, and it could be a 50 to 48 game. Yeah, yeah. 82 45 was that was wow that score. So Shelton has their work cut out for him. So and then our friends in D2. The Loop City Red Raiders. How about that? Moving on. Right. Good for them. They're having a great year up in Loop City. They came in 6-2. Uh, and two. They dispatched Overton and then Hemingford. This week they're going to take on Elgin Pope, Pope John, and that's uh, that's a tough team. If they beat Elgin, Elgin Pope John, we, we've got a team on our hands in right. Central Nebraska. That's a tough football team yeah. up there. That'll be, that'll be one of the, you know, one of the real tests for them. It will. But, you know. A team gets hot during the playoffs, and things just click. I mean, they. Usually, know. I know they don't have. They usually don't have two backs the caliber of Brady Rasmussen, and then you move an end in the backfield, and he sets a school record for rushing yards. Yeah. They've got some weapons, and and Austin Bo Bocart, the quarterback, is terrific too. Just a just a, a, a brief comment about Class A, the big schools, uh, no area teams, but no. uh, M the Millards, South and North, will play. That's a rematch. Right. North got him the first time there, undefeated. And then Prep and Omaha North. I like that one. So we have a Millard, we have a private school, and I have OPS, right. you know, but all from the metro area. But the Prep Omaha North game seems a little more dramatic to me. It seems like it's going it to be. It does. It's their old rivals from years back. I don't know when they started playing. 
it was long before we were around, but that should be a great matchup. And, and I'd like to see Omaha North in the finals. I mean, they've been coming on for a couple of years, and Larry Martin is doing a great job there. So And coming on this year as well. Oh, you know, boy. They win the game last week against Southeast with four seconds left. Why wasn't I there? Yeah, yeah terrific. So they're going to they're gonna, uh, match it up against longtime and perennial power Omaha Creighton Prep, kind of back from a year or two where they were down. Uh, you know, Jaworski, at the end of Jaworski's uh, uh, right. his career. A year transition. And is then a the year George. transition, and here they are back in the semifinals mm -hmm. of Class A football. So, all right, any bold predictions? Uh, you know, the only thing for Class A and then we're filming this that now, I was so going to say <laughs> is that um, I think Freddie Petito at Millard North has only one thing to fear before he, before everything's said and done, and I think it's Millard South. And Millard South, if they weren't banged up, may have a better shot, but when those two teams get together, it's really scary. And I don't, I'm not predicting an upset, but it wouldn't surprise me if it happened. It was 12-10 mm -hmm. beginning of the season. Right. But um, other than that, boy, I, I don't know what to say because who would have predicted all the things that happened last week? I don't right. think you can stick your neck out. I'd hate to be a prep raider and, and have to pick all the games. Right. It's, it's going to be tough. So It will be. But we do know this. It'll be good, exciting high school football. That's for sure. So And interesting as heck. Yes. Get yourself out to see a playoff game in your area if you can. A little shout-out to the Nebraska State High School Volleyball Championships. They start this week in Grand, in Grand Island, and the finals will be Saturday at the Heartland Event Center. This has been End Zone Online on TheIndependent.com. I'm George Ayer with my buddy Bobby Mills, the Thousand Yard Guy. We'll see you next week. Got game? Sluggers features pool, Mega Touch Aurora, Silver Strike Bowlers Club, Kino, and an in-house darts league. Play and more at Sluggers Bar and Grill.